It's my American family's first time in Germany. So what did they think? Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie and along with my wife Aubrey we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. So this week we have had my brother Tyler and his wife Jamie visiting us from the US and this is Jamie's first time ever to Germany and this is my brother Tyler's actually second time visiting Germany but they have never come to visit us in the four years that we've been living here. So we've been really excited to be able to show them around Germany and give them a better inside scoop of what German culture is all about. Now for some of you guys who have been watching our videos for a while you may actually recognize Tyler from one of our other videos. After the server takes the credit card. That's my brother. He has worked in the restaurant industry and most recently managed a couple of restaurants in Oklahoma. When the card is swiped, um, it's documenting the information that's on the credit card. But we thought after their trip, it would be fun to sit here and talk about their experiences in Germany and kind of find out what were some of their culture shocks and what did they think after coming to Germany for the very first time. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today in our video. When my brother's in town, you know it's going down. Go ahead and just tell us what was your favorite place that you visited on this trip? I liked Baccarat or Baccarat. 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 That was my favorite. I liked uh, all the little towns along the Rhine River. I really liked nature, so I really liked the Rhine, generally speaking. All of the towns along it were just really beautiful, really well kept, felt like they had the castles. How did I forget the castles? Oh my gosh, that's why we went there in the first place. We like, it was so cool to see castles. Yeah, I guess Bacharach would actually be my favorite too. We saw a couple castles there, but my favorite was going up the trails up into the youth hostel. But the scenes from going up there are just mm. beautiful. And I particularly love seeing all of the vineyards that go up the sides mm. of the mountain. That was not something that I expected to see in Germany. Actually, I could say, I mean, really, the first one was up there. It's hard to Meisenheim. rank. My, yeah, Meisenheim, right? I did love Meisenheim. I did love Meisenheim, too. Yeah, I, Meisenheim was so fun just for how idyllic it was. Mm -hmm. And it felt like nobody was there. We had the town to ourselves. Love seeing the outer medieval wall that was there that's still intact. Yeah. The river that runs around the back of it. Like, that is just like a quintessential, like a fairy tale German town in my head. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about some of your experiences with German food. First, tell us about, have you ever had like German food before? I grew up in a bratwurst family. <laughs> we <laughs> love bratwurst. So did you guys have bratwurst while you were here? I did once. And how did that compare to like what you grew up having like with your family? It was better because I liked the bread that it was around it. They are different. Like I feel like the ones that we have at home are more like short and kind of fat. Mm -hmm. Whereas the one that we had was much Very longer. long, yeah. yeah. You focused more on like our regional German food. Were there kind of any surprises or shocks when it came to the food versus what you maybe thought German food would be coming into here? When I was here the first time, I was more in the Bavarian region and I did feel like the food was a little bit different from that region. It was fun learning about more of the, I guess, more insider uh, food, I guess, of this region. And what were some of your favorite dishes that you had here? Oh, I'm gonna need help with the name, but the uh, the potato dumplings that I had tonight, mm -hmm. what was that again? A gefühlte? Was delicious, loved gefühlte. I really liked the flam. Flammkuchen. Flammkuchen. I really enjoyed that. The bun, uh, that like the, it was like a bao bun. Dampfnudel. The Dampfnudel was delicious, and I did not expect something like that. Yeah, I, I, when I feel like I think of the German food, all I'm thinking of is like the sausage and sauerkraut and things like that. I'm surprised you haven't talked at all about the Zaumagen. Oh, oh yeah. Man, I just hadn't thought about it. Yeah, no, I mean. Really, the Zaumagen might've been one of my favorite things. Yeah, just like the big patty of sausage. It was delicious. It really wasn't like a flavor that I've ever had in the US when it comes to meat or anything like that. The pretzels are so much better. At Auntie Annie's at the mall, they give you <laughs> cheese dip and it's really just to mask having a bad pretzel. It was a better texture. Just sometimes they're way overloaded with salt in America, like it's disgusting. So there was a perfect amount of salt. Yeah, just 
way better. What were the biggest differences that you noticed between like German food versus American food? There's meat, so much meat. <laughs> I love meat. Uh, it was like, a, there's like so much meat though. <laughs> you know, it's not exactly food, but the first night that we were here, there was a festival going on downtown and it was really fun seeing the bar carts that they had in the festival where they had all the beer on tap and people just going around with the glassware. Because in America, first off, you wouldn't have anything on tap at a festival really. It's mostly just getting cans and bottles and you definitely wouldn't be seeing anybody using glassware at mm -hmm. festivals. Like it would mostly just be plastic cups and things like that. I also was really, it was wild to see glassware. Like I was just walking around with a stein. You paid for the glassware up front, so then you got your money back when you returned it, which is this really smart way of doing it. Would it be a culture shock or a surprise you to find out that in Germany that is not called a stein? Yes. <laughs> what is that called? Yeah, so that's in the US, we call that a stein. In Germany, a stein is just a stone or it would be a mug that's specifically made out of clay. Yeah, it was an environmentally friendly way of uh, serving people. <laughs> and feeling classy. And I loved the wine sholas. Is that it? Is that my, am I saying it right? Yeah, wine shola. Wine sholas. I loved that. I'd never even heard of like just diluting your wine with water and making it a bigger drink that still tastes good. Was that a surprise to you at all? That this was like a wine region? Did you expect more beer? Yes, very much so. Like I thought this is gonna be like, come have a beer everywhere you go. But it was really way more like Riesling wine centered and I personally like that more. So I really appreciated that. Real quick, I wanna thank all of our patrons and YouTube channel members. I really appreciate all of the support in helping me bring you this content. And if there are some of you looking for other ways to support this work, simply hitting the like and subscribe button really goes a long way and I would appreciate you doing that. So I was wondering if there were any th differences with a German house compared to an American house that just kind of surprised you. You start I do first, have you got one. something, yeah. I don't like the toilet here. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually gonna be my first thing too, is hate that poop shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I thought that the toilet was backwards, actually. I didn't, I'm, this is the first time hearing of the poop shelf, but. Right now in this video, this is the first time you're hearing of the poop shelf and you've been here all this time. I haven't asked, but I've tried to use the other toilet because there's two downstairs toilets here. And I was like, well, one of them has Doesn't a- Doesn't have a poop shelf. <laughs> one of them is normal and one of them is disgusting. It makes sense. What's when the Donnie reason? explained it to What's me. What's the reason? In some way, so some of the reasons that I was explained is that it is more economical because you're not using as much water, which great. Two, you don't have the Poseidon effect of a drop in and splash. <laughs> the kiss of Poseidon. The kiss of Poseidon. <laughs> Poseidon I like the Poseidon effect, effect better. But it just is so nasty. <laughs> it's so Is nasty. that the only two reasons? And three. And three. I told you. you I don't, don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and three, it catches the stool so that you can observe it, look at it, and see how your stool's doing. Mm -hmm. How your stools are so going. So do most Homes have this? Is this a normal thing? Or is this your house specifically? No, this is an older German thing. They're going out of style, but some people still Good. prefer them. No, it had me sitting at the edge the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this. <laughs> Trying to miss the I gotta, shelf. I gotta aim differently in the toilet. <laughs> so what, but what about it? Did you not like? Like, why was it so different? <laughs> I, I don't mean. really feel like we have to get into it too much, <laughs> too much more. Actually, the water masks a lot of things. One benefit I would say is it gets me off the toilet faster. It does. I don't want to. I don't want to linger in there for too long. Yeah. <laughs> what about the rest of the home? Is okay. there anything else in the rest of the home? I like the windows. Yeah. Windows, I feel like that's covered a lot in your channel, but the windows are great. Of course, the the way they like fold down is really nice. Um, so you can let the airflow go through that way. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in America that I'm even aware of. And the fact that they will open all the way up like, like you're opening up the fr refrigerator. So in America, they slide up. You like have to push it up. And it's only half the window. Yeah, it's only half the window. You don't get the full opening with full airflow no. ever. How did you handle a heat wave in Germany without air conditioning. The air conditioning not having it didn't bother me too, too much because I did love just opening up all the windows and basically feeling like you're inside the and outside. The night air, connect. yeah. In terms of like Blurred. sleeping at night, I will say it. the room was warmer than I'm used to, but um, I just didn't sleep under the covers. I just slept on top of the bed and was fine. Yeah, we had a fan going, we had our open window and just slept open and it was nice. Mm -hmm. But it was fine. <laughs> 
Jamie has done her study abroad in Italy. And so you talked about how like Italy is extremely diverse across Italy. It's not just like one kind of Italy. Did you come in with the perception that all of Germany was one? And were you kind of surprised to see the regional differences that we kind of talked about with you guys about the food and the language and things like that? Yeah, I had no idea that Germany had regional anything. So I knew that Italy had that, but to come here and find out like the regional language differences and food differences, things like that, I had no idea. Because to me, it was just like Germany is Germany, especially the, the language variation. I knew the Bavaria was kind of like his own region. And I've heard Bavaria being compared to Texas, but I wasn't aware of how many different regions there were. And the local dialects was a really interesting thing to learn about, like to learn that somebody in the place that we're at only speaks a certain dialect and it differs from common German or from another town over. The fact that they wouldn't even be able to communicate as well was pretty wild to hear. Any local dialect words? Do you remember any of them? Uh, Potato and potato. <laughs> what was the local Feltzish word for potato? Crombiera. 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 And what was standard German potato? Cartuffle. Cartuffle, Cartuffle and Crombiera. For all of our local viewers from the Faults, you can grade that pronunciation. Who's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> dumb? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> What was your perception or ideas of Germans before coming here? And Jamie, you've talked about kind of like, you've heard Italians when you did your study abroad in Italy, kind of their perception of, of Germans, and maybe that might have been part of your influence of what you thought Germans might be like. What did you think Germans were like? And then what were your ex experiences of actually observing Germans while you're here? So, so the perception when I studied abroad in Italy, of course, Italians um, are, you know, very much fashion forward. There was one time I very specifically remember asking like, who's the worst fashion in all of Europe? And I had no idea what they would say. Like I didn't know anything. And they were like, oh, the Germans. And and I will say, you know, in comparison, I, I who's to say? Yeah, I'd say the first like local German train that we went to, the first thing that stuck out to me uh, was the fashion of the people on the train. <laughs> like not dogging German people as a whole, but it was like, I looked down, I was like, oh, they really do wear black socks with sandals. <laughs> like I did not, I thought that might've just been a stereotype. And then we saw uh, the girl, she was uh, like sewing um, a purse made of Capri Suns. <laughs> a purse made of Capri Suns? Yeah. I, I don't know if we told you guys about that. No, we no. Didn't. Yeah, there was a girl there that just had a needle and string and she was just threading together Capri Suns to make a little yeah. handbag. Like actual Capri Sun? Yeah. Pouches. Capri Pouches? Sun pouches. Yeah, because yeah. they're, pretty, they're pretty durable. Capri Suns are very popular in Germany, so that is actually the ultimate German thing to have a Capri Sun purse. That is the most ultimate German thing. It's Capri Sun. <laughs> Capri Sun purses. Yeah. Forget, <laughs> forget later hosen and beer. Capri yeah. Sun Capri purses. Sun. <laughs> that was really surprising. Just seeing like at convenience stores and maybe like even a couple of restaurants that was like Capri Suns were available even in vending machines. That was pretty wild. I didn't even weird. notice that. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. So why is that why is that wild to you? Because that's like that's like a childhood child drink lunch. only. Yeah, that's like yeah. elementary school. And that's even like the you're a kid and you're excited and you're like, oh yeah, mom <laughs> killed it today. I got a Capri Sun. But then on top of that, the first German train that we went on to, we had like three or four groups around us just drinking beer. And yeah. that was like, whoa, what is going on? <laughs> like you can just drink beer on these public trains. I didn't <laughs> expect that at all. Were you able to pick up any German while you were here? Not very much. Let's list everything we know. My first thing that I felt like I needed to know as a person was how to say like, pardon me or like, sorry. So, truly uh, gong. <laughs> Danke. And then Vasa, Strauss for street. Strasse. Oh, we learned today, we learned uh, street and village. No, it was village and city. Yeah. What was that? It was... Uh, Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we didn't learn very much at all, no, really. No, no, no. No, we did not learn anything, actually. <laughs> well, how did you feel like, was it important to learn any German coming over here or not so much? I think that, like I would tell people it's important. I think it is important to maybe learn a few things, but I and Donnie speaks 
to me, fluent German. And it felt like there was a lot of Germans that even when he would start talking, they would hear his accent and just immediately switch to English. So I felt like a lot of people knew English and would rather just get on with the conversation than try to like assist or talk in German. So like it's both, I would say. It's like, you should probably learn a few just so you can be courteous and still be polite. That's what I think everybody always says is that the locals are always gonna appreciate you speaking or trying to attempt to speak some of their language. So I actually think it'd be interesting to ask the Germans watching, how do you feel when somebody comes and doesn't speak any or attempt to speak any German? Or if they don't want them to even try, they just rather have them speak in English. Could you describe maybe like what you imagine when you thought of a beer garden before you came over here versus like what you actually experienced and also like what your perception of a beer garden is now that you've been to kind of a bunch of them. I thought a beer garden was just a bar. We have a couple places in Oklahoma City that are beer garden types of places. They are very much alcohol centered and like maybe have some food, but you're going for the alcohol. I was like, oh, a beer garden is just a restaurant. Like it's just a really pretty restaurant outside that has a pretty big menu. And I mean, it had lots of different things. It had wine, it had beer, it had- A playground. A like, playground, yeah. yeah. Like it was just a nice place to take your family for an, a, a meal. Yeah, it kind of feels like a beer garden in the US would be a place where like maybe from six to nine, you would go to just to drink casually with friends, but then from nine to midnight, it becomes then it more gets like a party. a club. It becomes yeah. into a more of a, like a rager. Are those in the US that you're talking about, or in Oklahoma, are they like German themed or are One they not? One of them is but hardly at the I same mean, time. yeah, like they're they're trying to be. But like they, I don't think they're as concerned with like the glassware that you use for different types of beer mm -hmm. or they also have German a huge style beer. Menu. Yeah. yeah, like they're not serving exclusively German beers or no. things. It's more so that they use the name and they're serving beer. And they're, <laughs> well, they do have like bratwurst. That's true. Yeah, they might have they like have bratwurst. Like, they have like bratwurst and yeah. things like that. But it's definitely, Emphasis on the bar that has some food. I, I would also say kind of something that was surprising about the beer gardens was I think I always imagined beer gardens being in the city or like being in town, but it felt like a lot of the beer gardens that we went to almost felt more like a park. Like it felt yeah. more like it, we were going out by a river and there was a park there and it was much more casual than what I expected. And then the most important question of them all, did you enjoy Germany more than Italy? No, but that's not <laughs> gonna happen because that's, I speak Italian, I learned the language, I lived there, that's not gonna happen. But I did enjoy Germany. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is, what's the best way to cook a potato? Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and I will see you in our next video. So this week we have had my brother and his wife visiting us from the US and, no wait, I forgot to say, I wanna introduce him first. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this week we have had my brother Tyler and his wife Jamie visiting us from the US also, both from Oklahoma, of course. No, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Just forget that. Don't be I weird, would have, I would be so mad. <laughs>